Good morning, afternoon or evening, uh, depending on when you're watching this. Welcome to Around the Lake for the week of May 13th. I'm here with Glennis Hart. Who are you, though? Good, good luck with that. I'll introduce myself in a minute. I'm right. the Finger Lakes Community Newspapers editor and reporter extraordinaire. And Brian Van Campen. Media who, dude. Who's <laughs> our, yeah, media dude. It's pretty general. Yeah. I'm Josh Brokaw, reporter for the Ithaca Times. And uh, we're going to start with Brian, just because uh, we don't want to make Americans who are impatient for entertainment wait for their movie reviews. Yeah, and we'll talk about, you know, news later. We were just talking about a movie uh, uh, that's going to be coming back for a show at the State Theater, which really kind of started the whole culture of, uh, of how much a movie makes at the box office. And after that, a couple of years later came Jaws, and then after that, all, you know, the shows like Entertainment Tonight, which, you know, they, they would post the box office results on their show on Monday, and I just, I remember... Yeah, it was, a, it was a weird thing of, you should see this movie because everyone is seeing it, which yeah. was... Yeah, wasn't that the American, you know, it was the, very the strange. majority is right sort of thing? It was no, no yeah. movie up until, and by the way, the movie that we're talking about is Jaws, uh, no movie up until that point had made this kind of money before. Uh, they had no idea that there was this much, much money out there, and, uh, and I was actually uh, on a road trip with my dad that summer, driving from Ithaca to uh, Colorado for a family reunion back. And the movie came out while we were on the road. And my dad had a copy of the paperback book. And if you've ever read the Peter Benchley novel. Yeah, the know, Peter Benchley novel is actually pretty good. But it I starts thought. with the girl going out into the water and getting her leg bitten yeah. off and dying. Yeah. And I was like, wow, if the movie is one-tenth as, as intense as this opening couple of chapters, I don't think so. And I remember we would, we'd, we'd end up at a motel that was near a movie theater that was playing it. And we would say, let's go see Jaws. And as as it got closer and closer to showtime, I was like, let's go see the Apple Dumpling Gang instead. And my kid brother, my, step, my stepbrother, this, who was younger than me, saw it before I did and had no problems with it. So finally, I think I saw it on cable. I've never seen Jaws in a theater. So I didn't. I, I saw maybe the first 10, 20 minutes yeah, of said it. You, I, yeah, I you walked, walked out. Wow, you I walked, walked out. out. I was too scary. Where were you at Hopper Suit? <laughs> I probably didn't go to that one either. What, yeah. Uh, well, so what, 40 years ago, so... 40 years ago, I was 12 75. years old. Yeah, yeah, 1975. I so was 10. Steven so, Spielberg had yeah. uh, done it's a lot of... It's thing that they let me in. <laughs> I was, was that pre, uh, pre, it was PG. pre ratings days? It was PG. Yeah, it was PG. Yeah. It wasn't, they didn't show gore. No, there's if you want to see like, if you want to see a blood, gory shark movie, you go see Deep Blue Sea. I think it's called uh, yeah. with uh, ja Samuel Jackson. But they did have that scary tone, you know, dun 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 dun. Yeah. That was that was it's, the it's, theme of the summer. And when Saturday Night Live went theme. on the air, one of the first sketches they did was yeah. Chevy Chase in the yep. uh, in the yeah As Palmer the shark. Ram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Shark Ma'am. Uh, uh, <laughs> So it was iconic, you know, if you heard that. And, and I think, uh, what, no, I don't think I know, in, later on in an airplane when, when the movie opens, you see these, this fin of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a jet plane go through the clouds. <laughs> and, they, and, they bar, and they borrow right. the theme. Yep, yep, they do. And then it comes up, you know, and then it comes up like a, like a shark. Uh, it, was, it was a really great visual joke. So, you know, truly an iconic movie. And Steven Spielberg had done a lot of TV at that point. He'd done the, he'd done the first Columbo that ever uh, was aired. Right. Did he really? And um, his, what really put him on the map was a TV movie that he made called Duel mm -hmm. with Dennis Weaver, which is about a guy being chased by a truck, you know, a you know, guy in a car being chased by this huge, nasty truck. And, and it's like, so, like the precursor to rubber. Yeah, it kind of was. Right. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and then he made a movie with Goldie Hawn called uh, The Sugar Land Express. And yeah, that wasn't a, it wasn't a box office success, but he got a lot of good reviews, and, and he almost didn't do Jaws, and then they, they kind of talked him into it. Weirdly, I was very scared as a child by an episode of Columbo. Yeah. Because uh, there was, like, bodies behind the seats. I don't know. I didn't, it didn't kind of freak me out that yeah. this man had a trench coat. They like, used to have, like, a Sunday Night Mystery Night. Found these things night. all the time. They had a Sunday Night Mystery Night where they would rotate uh, Columbo and uh, Dennis Weaver show, and then another couple of mystery shows. So it would be, like, once a month you'd see it. Uh, so Jaws is playing uh, May 30th. At the, May 30th. Okay. okay. So at the, at yeah, the state, we, we, state could, we could go hang out and, and do that. And Watch you know, the whole movie. That'd for be a movie. And then go swimming. For a movie. And then go swimming <laughs> immediately <laughs> afterwards. For a movie that started the whole blockbuster trend, mm -hmm. where they were just chasing dollars after that, Jaws is not like a Michael Bay movie where it's cut, cut, cut everything. It's pretty methodical. It's kind of you know, it's it's. You know, yeah. it's a Spielberg movie. It's it's not uh, kind of what we're what we're used to now with like the the really quick cutting and uh, eight units working on it at once and all this uh, 
pre-visualized special effects and stuff. And, it's and actually like a, Richard, Richard Dreyfuss is Ahab. Yes, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And if the shark, I think if the shark, had, the mechanical shark had worked more, I don't think the movie would be as good because they actually get a lot out of not showing you the shark until the very end. Sure. Right. Um, speaking of sharks, <laughs> Uh, so I have a sort of a good news. That, that was good news. This is bad news, and we'll get back to some good news. Um, uh, I saw uh, Reese Witherspoon and Sofia Vergara in Hot Pursuit this weekend, so you don't have to. Oh, um, okay. That was that's what I got out of your review. I'm in fact, uh, in the paper. That's not mm. even the original Hot Pursuit. John Cusack made a 1987 movie. Called I knew I'd heard that. Oh, really? Before. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love those early John Cusack movies. This is not. This, this is, is not, not as it? good as. Oh. It's not even I'm a show. Better, better off. Love John better Cusack. off dead is a, is a classic. Is a classic. Is a classic. Okay. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. And uh, the Sure Thing and stuff like that. No, this is uh, one of his lesser vehicles. So no one's ever made a good movie called Hot Pursuit. So any of you film students out there, that can you explain it. to me a reference I don't get? I'm not much of a film guy. I know who Goldie Hawn is. I don't even really know who Charo is. Charo. Charo. Charo was this kind of hoochie coochie uh, Latina performer. You'd see her on. It was like when you would grow oh, up, you'd see all these weird okay. people on the Hollywood squares or Match right, Game. Right, you wondered, right. Oh, why are they? Why are they? Who, who are, are they? Who right. is why Charles they? Nelson Riley? What did yeah, he who do? is Charles? <laughs> <laughs> right. Richard, I mean, I knew Richard Dawson because he was on Hogan's Heroes, but it was right. this weird mixture of actors and just. Per, and right. I didn't find out until later that Charles Nelson Riley was like a theater oh, was actor. On, he was on Match. But Charo oh, was a very okay. actually good. She was a very good classical guitarist, and she's worked in this sort of kooky Latina mold where she was always shaking her maracas, if you know what I mean. So she was a kind of an early crossover performer. Yeah. That sort of. And when right. I see Sofia Vergara, I kind of get that vibe uh, because I, she stopped making me, I, I stopped watching Modern Family after a couple seasons. I, uh, it was cute for a while, but I just sort of was like, okay, they're never really going to evolve. It's just going to be sort of these sort of farcical stories from week to week. And I can't do that in modern TV. I haven't seen it for a while. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think people are really more into narrative now. Yeah. They want to see something like Daredevil, where it has a f clear narrative, and you can binge watch it, of course, which is oh, great. Yeah. Um, Except for the millions who still watch CBS sitcoms. But I mean, so. stop me if you've heard this before. Uh, Reese Witherspoon plays a by-the-book cop uh, with kind of lack of personal experience who ends up having to uh, uh, protect uh, uh, this, this sort of Latina trophy wife whose husband has to testify in a big co court case, and there's people after them with guns and, uh, and, and double crossing and stuff. And I could, so I predicted, like a, I predicted like, every single. Oh, no, that's too uh, bad. It's like, just like a buddy, beat, the same yeah. old buddy I movie, exactly except they bugged in females. If I had to go to the bathroom, yeah. I could have predicted what was happening while I was doing my thing <laughs> and coming back. I, I go to movies all times with friends and they're like, this is what happened when you, while you were going. I know exactly what happened. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's bad. So uh, uh, Reese Witherspoon is like 22. 20 years too old for the part. It really requires like a younger, mm -hmm. the, the, the character needs to be younger. Uh, Sofia Vergara hasn't really worked for me for a while. So, and there's just scene after scene of dumb behavior trying to justify these cliches that we've seen a zillion times. It's just, it's not good. You'll be, you'll be seeing it again on my top worst uh, movie of the year for sure. That's how I felt well, about Bridesmaids. Now that you've uh, not, that was so well regarded though. What's that? Bridesmaids? <laughs> Bridesmaids, yeah. Really, yeah. Really was. Well, I was just like, oh. I don't know, I never saw it. But well, you know, time for that stuff I write for a newspaper. Same kind of thing, it was. It was just like so predictable. But the nice <laughs> thing about Bridesmaids was, um, I mean, they didn't, they never had great parts, but like if you're a, if a student of comedy and someone who thinks that women are funny, I saw a lot of really funny women in that movie who I had seen in a while. Right, uh, right. People who had um, been on Saturday Night Live and had made me laugh and, and maybe haven't had the great career that some of them have, but... Uh, like Melanie Hutzel was in the movie just for, uh -huh. for a minute, and I really used to like her on, on the show. Right. So, so I thought it was good. You know, even I know there's been a lot of uh, detractors of Bridesmaids because they kind of felt like they had to go for gross-out humor, which maybe they didn't have to do. But uh, I like Kristen Wiig. I'm a fan. Mm. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to mention uh, real quick uh, a couple of DVDs that came out this week that I think uh, under underseen kind of culty things that are. That I, um, Okay. The first so. one is this Johnny Depp movie called Mordecai. Now, I may be a cult of one on this, but I loved this movie. Um, oh, okay. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like a Pink Panther movie without Peter Sellers, where they realize you can't you can't replace Peter Sellers. You can't have somebody else doing Inspector Clouseau. Well, why can't we have a sort of a movie that looks like it was made in 1968? One of those old Blake Edwards farcical okay. action comedies. This is the the one that came out fairly recently. The it came Mordecai. out in January, which is usually January, the and then they just went straight to DVD oh, because yeah. it's I, Johnny I, Depp being too weird for a lot of people. <laughs> I was the only one in a the theater, but I didn't care. I was really enjoying myself. 
And I one of the other, like Johnny Depp And one of the other really staff weird. members came in. Yeah. He must have had a 20-minute break, and he must have liked it, too, because he came in and watched it for 20 minutes and then left and had to go back to sweeping the floors or whatever. So <laughs> for, for a while, there were two of us with this movie, and we were just having a God experience. Because I actually like Johnny Depp being, because he's trying isn't to... Isn't that his job to be weird? Like, isn't it his job to create characters? Yeah. And yeah. act? And, and act. Real, and, and really, and, you know, put on the funny voice and the... I mean, you'll know he plays this kind of sleazy art dealer who's uh, on the brink of bankruptcy, and he's married to Gwyneth Paltrow, and he's got this huge mansion that he can't afford, and he gets involved in various capers. But you'll know if this movie's for you because it starts with him having this kind of meeting with these high-profile Hong Kong guys about a, an art art sale. It kind of looks like the opening scene of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and he's talking about his. He introduces them to his mustache. Like it's, a, <laughs> like it's a like it's a character, like it's a person, and you either that either makes you laugh like till you can't stop, or it doesn't. And uh, apparently, it didn't work for anybody. But I thought it, I thought it should have been uh, held back and you know right. treated with a little more love and care because it looked like a Blake Edwards movie from 1968, and there's nothing wrong with that. And also, um, uh, there was a group in M on MTV, a comedy group called The State. Mm -hmm. And I missed them completely the, when they were on MTV because that I was have, where uh, John no. Stewart got to start, right? Yeah, he was early. There's Eleven of these folks, and they're all in various things now, like Stella and, and Reno 911, and they've written movies and made movies and all kinds of stuff. But the first thing that I saw of theirs was a, a movie called The Wet Hot American Summer, yeah. which has a very passionate, small cult following. It's kind of a parody of camp movies like Meatballs and stuff like that. Right. Gene Garofalo's in it, and David Hyde Pierce. Like and late late nineties. Like, yeah, know. I want to say late nineties, early early yeah, aughts. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it's been I'm out. So, I don't think it's Stuart been out there for about that. fifteen yeah. years. It's, didn't didn't make a whole lot of money yeah. at, at the time. But again, it's no, my sort of, roommate was just talking these about movies it the kind other day. of yeah. movies kind of fall away or they don't, and this one kind of held on and sort of developed a, yeah. a cult following. And so they've just now put a, a, a new Blu-ray out with you know a lot of extras and commentary and all that fun stuff for people that really want to know about how the movie was made and, and uh, no that was one that was totally in the comedy central like 4 p.m like yeah, rotation right, right, when right, i was right, like right. 15 the so comedy, like the daily yeah. comedy movie absolutely yeah. and i'm sure it's played there hundreds and hundreds of times where usually it's like jim carrey you know like that sort of thing mm -hmm. that's definitely the afternoon comedy hey, so central. maybe you know Matt to Dene. sort of bring it back to the beginning of the discussion um those blockbuster movies like jaws or everybody went to see i mean mm -hmm. maybe that phenomenon is 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 going away as you have more of these independent or small films released where anybody can find them. You know, it's kind of like the small press thing. Well, here's the weird thing: that the blockbuster movies now play so many times on so many different screens when they open. Mm -hmm. Like I think they started showing the Avengers movie the Thursday before it opened. They had right. evening screenings and then all day Friday and all day Saturday. So by the time we got to it on Saturday, granted it was a beautiful day, right? <laughs> Ninety <laughs> degrees, blue sky. But I actually was worried about getting in for like a noon show on Saturday. I think that the way that they just rush it at you like the night before, I think all the Avengers hardcores in Ithaca had seen it. Mm -hmm. So there was no problem getting a seat. There were about you know, 20 of us in the theater. Hmm. I think they make so much money on that opening weekend that they can never, they can never get, it, get back to that because hmm. they've just got it playing on so many different screens right. at so many staggered times. You could see it every half an hour. And they've got the 3D screenings, which bring in more money because they're more expensive. I mean, it's, I don't want to, actually, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to jeopardize, uh, somebody from Regal might see this, so maybe I don't want to say this. But <laughs> All right, well, we'll, we'll <laughs> we can quit, there. we can quit theorizing about the economics. Regal's of, uh, great, uh, I go to Regal's for free there Now let's get into the, the complaints about studios doing nothing but franchises. Um, that's, there's a long form article. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, a guy named Tom Lennon from the state who wrote the night. Uh, yeah, night Green Nine One One. yeah. Uh, and is, Rev, uh, Jim Dangle on uh, 911 was on uh, The Nerdist recently, and he says there's never been a time where they're making fewer movies than right now. I mean, the, just production is coming down. And I don't know if anybody else notices or cares, but I've just noticed that, you know how when the movie starts and they have all the different, you know, you have a studio logo like Fox or Warner Brothers? Right. I'm seeing a, like seven logos. Yeah. It's like there's it just seems like there's well, less and less buys money. Different deals, Everybody's like, like partnering yeah. up, right. Everybody's partner, partnering partnering up in ways that they never used to. It was yeah. a 20th Century Fox movie, or it wasn't, you know. Right, right. And now it's like you're wading through. You go seven Lions studio Gate, logo. and then you go through this, and then you go yeah, through that. Yeah, it's you like go, seven yeah. different yeah. entities had to get together to make this thing, and it's like 
It's a little ominous, I guess, if you're looking for money to make movies. <laughs> Unless All you're right. working for Marvel. Well, let's talk about other things. Uh, what did you write about I, this week? What I write about this week? I was going to ask you that because I'm the host. Oh, okay. sorts. Well, you wrote about Cas with the Cascadilla least Boat Club having the. I don't want to talk about the boat club. No, the 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 boat club's still going to be using the boathouse, and maybe some other people will use it soon. And they're going to pay like twelve thousand dollars to the city, and I've written thousands of words about it, with, which are all on Ithaca.com, uh, if you would like to read about the Cascadilla Boat Club and Boathouse. Um, school board okay, elections then. are coming up on May 19th. <laughs> Next um, Tuesday. So, so we have, a, we have actually, we have, we have contested elections. We have... Um, we have a lot of contested uh, people in Ithaca City School District, eight for four spots. Um, wow. So, yeah, now that one is, that one is kind of new to me. So I mean, uh, although I will read the article and vote um, <laughs> because I live in <laughs> it, an informed voter. That's not, that's not the beat that I've but been, in the, uh, been covering. But in the outlying areas, in the outlying areas, um, Trumansburg actually fell short. They do not have enough candidates. They have two open seats. They only have one candidate announced. Uh, you could, you know, if you get if five you, people on a write-in. Mm -hmm. um, if you stand outside. Yeah. yeah, stand outside with a placard, you might get elected to school board in uh, Trumansburg. Um, stranger my, things have happened. Oddly enough, my, my younger brother actually uh, is on the school board down in Hughesville, Pennsylvania, because there was an opening, and he was like, eh, why not? I'm like working, you know as yeah. a young person working a crap job. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so he's gonna be doing that this week because no one's on the ballot and he's an independent. Right. And in Pennsylvania, you can't like do anything as an independent because it's oh. you know an ancient state like that. So he'll be standing outside and being nice to people and they'll probably write him in, he'll be on the ballot and they need two spots and he's only one person, so. you know. Well, you know, you get to decide things like the school budget and uh, well, I thought it was That's interesting. Really I, I think it's yeah. interesting there's so many running in Ithaca because it seems to be uh, several of the people are. It's because of the Common Core uh, sort of right. people are up in arms Not about the testing. Not that people have a whole lot to, to so, The school board can't really yeah. do a whole lot about I think, that. I thought it was interesting. I know the person you quoted in the Trumansburg art, but there are these like school board associations you can get mm -hmm. involved with. I don't know if that gets you a little bit closer to state policy. It does. Not, you know. the, um, the New York State School Board Association is a, sort of a big deal. Um, as I, you know, when I go to Albany, you can see their, I drive by their building, which is this behemoth next to the highway, um, of which you kind of go, whoa, lobbying. But I guess they decided they needed a lobbying association, so now that they, ha now they have one. Uh, and I, they do need to tackle the whole testing issue. I mean, I think Common Core and testing are two separate issues they are. and they've, they been, are. they've been conflated. So there's, um, there's a question whether, to me, whether the teachers unions who have been really strong against the, um, uh, the use of the state tests to um, assess teachers' performance, um, whether they're going to stick to the issue of resisting the tests you know, once they, having won their concessions from from Cuomo, uh, well, be although they see. didn't really because what he's still going to use yeah. those those state tests. But uh, the tests are too much, and and the big problem, as I see it, is that the textbook company and the testing company, the same uh, Pearson, uh, basically has a lockdown yeah. on those tests, and uh, and they're and yeah, they're that's, ridiculous. That's kind of that's 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 kind of. Yeah, that's that's not uh, very comforting to hear. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things. It's like they need a sort of like a Glass Steagall Act to separate, you know, <laughs> the, the testing and the, uh, and well, the it's, or that you know, so, rather it, than banking. I you know, I investment. find it weird that questions about algebra and English grammar could be considered um, proprietary in in the sense of you can't see what questions we're asking your third grader because. That's our profit-making device. I mean, it seems to me that the test, yeah. you know, do you know long division? It's the same. I mean, that's the wonder of math. It's yeah. kind of this universal language. And so saying that, you know, you can't find out what your kid is 
getting tested on, or that we're going to put in these um, questions in the ELA test that don't count because we want to test those questions for mm -hmm. later use. And the kids don't know. And the kids don't know. They still have to take the dumb question that doesn't count. It's really sketchy. Yeah. Well, it seems to me, and maybe this is why I'm not running a large corporation, one of many reasons, but that <laughs> transparency is one of those things that would make everyone a lot less up in arms about this. And that's where a lot, there's this question that is kind of right. famous about the pineapple. Like the pineapple, oh, yeah, yeah, the pineapple, pineapple running the a race, race yeah, with it was a really, hair or something. It was something. hilarious. And the concluding question was, I don't remember what the answer was supposed to be. Like the, uh, it was the, a and gotcha. then everyone, everyone ate the pineapple. Yeah. Like everyone thought the pineapple had a trick, but then he just sat there. And then everyone, all the animals ate the pineapple. And everyone was just like, if you watch any of the news stories about this, like that comes up. Now, I think the Daily Show. Yeah, because it, it was a classic or, uh, question. John I mean, Oliver, it was it John wasn't it wasn't even it. like consistently yeah. absurdist. It was just it was just it didn't make bad. Any sense, it yeah. didn't make any it hits sense. It hits close to home for me because I actually have a bad teacher in my family, and I won't mention that person's <laughs> name. But I have a cousin who who's a, a teacher out in the Midwest. I'll just say in the Midwest. Okay. And uh, and maybe she's more vigilant uh, uh, when she's uh, teaching the kids. But I get Facebook posts where it's just like. You don't know the difference between there and there. Ugh. If she's passing that on, and I'm just like appalled at most. I mean, kids are, are just relying way too much on the spell check. You gotta really, you gotta learn to spell. Yeah, I'm frequently appalled by some of the um, Cause sometimes you'll communications write a, I sometimes get Sometimes you'll write a word that better. is an actual word that's still not the word you'd want yeah. to use. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of my first ever uh, reviews I wrote was for uh, Roger and Me, the mm -hmm. Michael Moore movie. And, said it opens with uh, uh, sort of dorky uh, public domain music like you'd hear in a student f in, a, in a school film like one of those remember anybody remember films in school that you had to watch they'd actually bring the projector in oh the film strip oh, yeah. the were yeah. yeah. sort of thing we're of the pre-digital age yeah right? mm -hmm. yeah sometimes the film would <laughs> I break remember or... overhead projectors yeah uh, what I wrote was pubic domain see <laughs> and yeah. uh, spell check was just fine with that and uh, my, yep. editor, my editor thank God my editor caught it at the time because that's that's embarrassing. Uh, so, yeah. learn to spell, kids. Learn so, to spell. That's what that's about. Um, and yeah. so we we're going to talk a little bit also about uh, also a thing you should do is learn to spell if you're going to make protest signs. Oh, people, that's people right. love to tear into people who make bad protest signs. I've seen that so many oh, places. Oh, tell me, was there a good one? Was there a really good no, one? No, really, this was just a terrible segue. Um, <laughs> that was a good segue. Oh. Actually, I do remember actually, the, you uh, should. the actually, Cornell, uh, the Cornell, some of the Cornell students, uh, they had de they had a de delegitimizing in a bunch of press releases a couple of weeks ago when I wrote about their uh, them not being happy about the health fee and such, and DI legitimizing was oh. everywhere. It was on chalk too, like the same person must have Ouch. screwed it up. Um, I did send them a notice of that. Um, <laughs> just like, Hello. for your future reference, guys. Always send it to somebody else and have them read it for you. Yeah. And then send it to yeah. somebody else. Well, my copy's always clean, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So, we have, so we have some so uh, we Seneca have Lake some protest Seneca Lake. news. We had yeah. Gas Free Seneca, which is a group that is um, protesting the use of abandoned uh, salt caverns. These are solution salt mines on the shore of uh, Seneca Lake on the west shore uh, that they, uh, Energy, is that the former company? Um, Crestwood is the corporation based in Texas that yep. would like to store LPG gas in these mines. And the, uh, the protesters, Gas Free Seneca, has been going around getting uh, various municipalities to pass resolutions uh, to send to the DEC saying that they oppose the permit for this to happen. So they- Pretty large number of resolutions around here. Yeah, 24. They're mm -hmm. on 24. Um, as a reporter uh, covering Ovid and Interlake and, and um, uh, the Seneca County, um, I've sat through three. Okay. Presentations, right? Sat through another one the other night at the Covert Town Board meeting. Uh, no dice. Shot it down. Uh, well, they 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 want. They said they wanted to hear the other side of the story. That's interesting. Well. Right. So, uh, so the argument from Gas Free Seneca, um, what is that? They don't really know 
what's down there. The only way you can look at those caverns is through sonar. These were solution sure. salt mines, so they, you know, kind of extracted brine. It's not like the Cargill salt mine out in Lansing where you can actually go down and get a tour and drive around. They don't do that very often, but I've seen pictures <laughs> of, right, and yeah. it's, it's cool. It's like this huge cavern with, you know, giant machines driving around. It's very, I don't know, um, want orcs to come out. Or Dystopia, something. yeah. Right. It's, it's not like that. These caverns, uh, the feeling is that they are not, um, they just don't really know what the geology yeah. is. There's and also how this safety. theory floated that uh, that uh, when they took because they've stored gas down there before in the 60s, yeah. when they removed the salinity of the lake, decreased. When, some people's well, well, that what they're saying so. is that um, Steve Churchill, who was speaking for Gas Free Seneca, has a chart showing the salinity of Seneca Lake, which is more saline than the other Finger Lakes. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is a stressed lake, as you pointed out, and there was a spike in the salinity in 1964, which is when TEPCO initially uh, stored gas in those mines. Now, it's not really clear why that happened, cool. and there is no the proof. very deep lakes. Uh, yeah. Right, there's no proof that storing the gas there caused the salinity which to I'm go up. Which I'm sure is what Crestwood is arguing. Um. Right, and TEPCO, uh, they, they stored gas there until 1984, and then they moved it to man-made storage or um, a little farther away from the lake. So then the other argument from Gas Free Seneca is, well, you know, why did they do that? According to someone from U.S. Salt, they did that because TEPCO raised the price, or the landlord raise the price on using the mines. So we'll see. Actually, tonight, so it goes back and yeah. forth. I mean, the, the argument, which I think is a strong argument, is that um, New York, this area of New York especially, has been rebranded. I mean, this is, they're going for wineries, wineries and tourism yeah. and food and, you know, big, CSAs. Also and a, big trucks and like sort of, on the west side of Seneca right. Lake on the wine trail. Well, but, uh, there probably wouldn't be that many trucks, but that's, you know, that's up for debate. Trucks. Um, I mean, they're saying we don't really need this. You're only going to bring eight jobs. So why take the risk? Yep. Yeah, and actually the city uh, planning board will have also a resolution, supposedly the only municipality who hasn't done a resolution against it in Tompkins County. So that's probably going to be up for a council vote in yeah. June. Um, and supposedly a decision coming down from the Department of Environmental Conservation beginning of June on right. this issue. And more people, including Joss Fox of Gasland, were arrested today. Um, yeah, people have been there. getting arrested so, there like we'll through the winter. I mean, we'll they've been amazing. They're pushing like 300 total now, and people are yeah. trying to get fresh arrest. Mm. But uh, anyway, that's all the time to go around the lake with you fine people this week of May 13th uh, with Brian Van Campen and our uh, mustache, mustache uh, personified mustache aficionado. Yeah, sure. And uh, Glennis Hart. <laughs> have you Hart. seen that movie? There's a French movie. <laughs> I'm Josh Brokaw, The Ithaca Times. I see ya in a while. The, um